Your API keys are not safe in a native app, no matter if you're using React Native, Flutter, Capacitor or anything else, and I'm going to show you why. Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from Galaxies.dev and in this video we will look at API keys and especially at secret keys and why you don't want to have them in your applications. And I'm going to show you how quickly I can get to the source code of your application and if I can do it in like 5 to 10 minutes, you can imagine what a real hacker with criminal energy and a lot of experience could do. So the first step is to actually get your application. You might think it's safe in the App Store and uh, wherever it is on a device. Mm -mm, it's not. So I just installed this uh, Apple Configurator tool here on my Mac. So we're going to start with iOS. I plugged in my application. Now I can simply select my phone. I can go to apps and I'm going to see all the apps. So I'm just going to search for one that I actually did. I'm going to add. So usually this is like to add an application to your device. But actually we're going to follow a bit different setup. So what we're going to do is um, while this thinks it will install the application, we're going to actually end that process when this dialog appears. And instead, we're going to go to my finder, or I'm going to do it from here. Uh, I'm just going to search for library. So here we go. Uh, if I now go to this one, uh, I'm going to just open it up. And there will be a folder and another folder. And voila, here we go. I already have my IPA in place. Now, I can simply rename this one to a zip file. Uh, so I want to use a zip. This is really just a package. I can unpackage it and I already got most of the interesting stuff. So I got the full plist down here, which you might think is some sort of a secret place inside a native app. No, it's not really. Uh, additionally, we can take this a step further. So here is the application. And I can just show the package contents and let's open Visual Studio Code and let's take a look at what we got here. So this is my app that I got just basically in like, I don't know, three minutes. So cool, here are the app icons. Here's my capacitor config, <laughs> my config, uh, my info plist with all the settings and voila. Here we go. These are the assets of my application. There's actually some testing assets, the app icon and everything that I had in my application. And of course, under static JS and CSS, I would now find exactly the CSS used and all the other stuff of my application. Now, this is not super impressive, but if there's any kind of API key here in this code, I would be able to find it. So I can just search, for example, I know that maybe there are funny console locks in here. So let's do console.lock. Um, I would find tons of console locks in here. Open my database, close my database. Ooh, this is this is like exactly the code actually of a plugin. But no matter what, I could find my own locks in here as well. Uh, and I could just go through all of this and figure out and definitely also find any kind of API key that I would have used in my Ionic application. And the problem is this is not just about Ionic applications. So here we go. I have a React Native application. It's the same. I can find my package. I can show the contents. I can go into this and also for React Native I would have instantly full access to all the source code that is used. For example, here I uh, built an application and I used an API key. So I can now just go ahead and search for the scheme that is usually used. Uh, I think it's like this. Yeah, so here we go. Uh, pretty quickly, I could find an API key. I just used some test key for open API as an example. And with this setup, uh, again, I would instantly find any kind of key that is either in the JavaScript bundle or also included in the info plist or anywhere else. And of course, I can also easily do this for Android. So with ADB, I can call ADB shell PM list packages. So I would see all the packages installed. I could now go through them and figure out the right uh, bundle name for a specific package. Then I could go ahead ADB shell uh, PM path for my application. So I actually did this before. Let's search for meme. Uh, here we go. So this gives me the exact package to a meme application on my device. And I could then run ADB pull on this path, which would download this application right here in my folder. And almost identically to the IPA, I can extract the content of the APK as well. So you can use either a tool like the uh, APK tool, which you can download. Uh, so then you can run APK tool D test, or you can actually also just 
uh, call on a Mac, unzip your APK, and it would also get all the stuff. And here we go. This is now actually a tiny bit different. This was not a React Native or a Capacitor application. This was in fact a Flutter application. And I would have a bit harder time to figure out the sources of a Flutter application. Um, I'm not an expert in decompiling and uh, getting to the sources. I just know that there are actually also online decompilers that you can use. But for Flutter, for reverse engineering, if you just look at stuff like this, it quickly becomes kind of ugly and I don't really want to get into this stuff. But certainly you can expect that people who are into this are actually able to get the data from your application and also, of course, get the API keys stored in your app. And finally, for the hardcore people, there are actually tools like Hopper, which actually really disassemble your application. This is really crazy. I just gave this a try and upload an IPA file into this. Uh, it will actually at some point give you like the machine commands and all these uh, assertions and you can change stuff. It's really like this is definitely beyond my knowledge, but we've seen with the first step already how to easily access info plists and all JavaScript sources. And with the right criminal energy, I'm pretty sure you could decompile this and easily also get the uh, native um, keys that are stored somewhere in your native application with tools like Hopper. And finally, I want to tell you that I didn't make this up. So I downloaded about 10 different applications from my iOS device and just searched for strings like secret or anything. So uh, between those 10 applications, here we go, I found something request signature secret in one of the applications peer list. So don't say nobody is doing this. I think actually really, really many companies are doing this and they are not aware of the problems that they could get with this approach. So the question is, how could you make your applications more secure? And there are five things that I want to tell you before you leave this video. Number one, if you have an API key, for example, to Stripe, to OpenAI, to any sort of uh, service, keep that behind a proxy. So you could just do a Node.js API, have an environment file in that Node API and your application only talks with this proxy and not directly with the actual service for which you would need an API key. Following up tip number two is to restrict access to that API to only your application. You can limit this to a specific uh, domain or bundle identifier and then you can make sure that only your application can actually talk to this proxy service, which can then use that secret key to talk to the real API. Tip number three is also, of course, make sure you're keeping secret keys in an environment file. So usually a .env file in your project that you also don't commit to GitHub or whatever kind of source control you're using and you only access the real secret keys from that environment and that file is usually under git ignore so it's not uploaded to source control. Tip number four is also to give you a bit more comfort because some things can actually be in your application. If you're using Firebase or Superbase, you can usually have that configuration in your application and you don't need to worry about it. The reason is that those tools have rules and security on their API on the backend. So you write security rules or role level security for the SQL database in Superbase and the configuration and the stuff, the keys you have in your front end application don't really matter as the backend and the real data source is actually protected by other rules. And tip number five, don't worry about everything. So if you're using a service like Crashlytics or something on that level, it's actually not too problematic if your API key is leaked and somebody finds it after 30 hours of debugging and decompiling your code, because what can they do? They can trigger more alert events in Crashlytics, but that's probably not gonna ruin your business. So the next time you need to integrate an API and have some secret keys, make sure that you think twice about this. Your application, React Native, Capacitor, React Angular, no matter what it is, is a web app. Even if it is built as a native application, you've seen how fast I was able to get to the sources of any kind of application. So please never store sensitive information on the client side and assume that all code of your applications is basically public and you only want to have this stuff in an environment in a server. If this video was helpful, please leave a like and stay subscribed to the channel for more great videos coming in the next time. I will hopefully catch you soon. So until then, happy coding, Simon.